Uh, Anil Magnani is the, now joining us on a phone line. Uh, Anil, uh, good afternoon. What do you make of the market move today? Uh, is it just a bounce uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of correcting market? I think uh, for, for now we'd have to uh, look at it that way. It's still, still very, very early days uh, given the way we've sold off in the last five, six sessions. Uh, there was a key level at 7366. It dipped slightly below that and bouncing from there, so that's fine. But uh, I think overall the uh, you know the momentum has been broken, so it will take some time to settle down. There will be a little of volatility. I think you can see you're seeing the same globally where you know sometimes the Dow falls three four hundred and then you see the Dow futures next day up two hundred. So that kind of volatility will be there. I don't think we're out of the woods so fast. Uh, I think we still got some uh, up and down movements to go. Having said that, suppose we were to uh, steady at these levels and bounce, then the first uh, key level to watch out would be about, I think, somewhere in the range of 75, 30 as a trading level. But uh, from a from a, a crucial point, I think 7605, which was the low last week, uh, we need to get above that to sort of gain some some kind of momentum. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, how would you be looking at global markets? You think global markets uh, also have to recover if we have to see a meaningful recovery? I think so, because I think uh, we we have crashed in line with what uh, global markets have done. For example, on Friday, um, the, the, the S&P itself was at, uh, at a 52-week low. It broke below the uh, August lows of 1867. So similarly, India also has taken out 7539 of September lows its last week itself. So I think we are more in sync with what's happening globally. And I think they also need to recover if, if we are to see a sustained recovery. I can't see this happening single-handedly. And I think uh, even there, uh, there is no confirmation that the bottom is in place. Uh, they might still head lower, which could eventually again bring about some sort of volatility here. Having said that, I think a lot of the breadth indicators that people follow, uh, even though I hate to use the word oversold because I've seen uh, things collapse. I mean, a classic example is gold or uh, can. You know, can was a 380 stock and now at 110. Uh, gold, I mean, sorry, not gold, I meant oil. Oil at 110 is 28, 29. So oh, who's to say what is the meaning of oversold? But generally, when people look at many of these, uh, like put call ratios or breadth indicators, many of them are at way, 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 way uh, negative levels, which generally the market tends to at least trade a bounce from there. So we are at that juncture right now. So the pullback rally seems to be in place, but is the volatility over? I doubt it. I think you're going to see some more in the near future. Right. Uh, what is the level that you said beyond which the pullback rally would confirm that we are in an uptrend? I think last week's high of uh, 7605. Uh, I mean, because even last week it was struggling. Every time we went to 7600, we fell off from there. We, we made a couple of dojis also, which look like we'll get over that, but we didn't. So I look at 7605 last week's high. As, as, as a level to first give me some indication that, uh, you know, the markets are sort of in the shorter term out of the woods. Right. Uh, what would you make of the recovery in some of the private banking names today? Again, a similar sort of a view? I think oversold, uh, maybe uh, uh, the one that really comes to mind as a bounce is Axis because Axis actually went and hit some key averages. So it, it hit the 200-week uh, or the 50-month average, so not surprised that that is bounced back uh, sharply from there. So that's that's one that immediately comes to mind. Uh, the other ones, mainly like an Indusind, HDFC, or Kotak, haven't really fallen. I think the the one maybe comparable to Axis is probably an uh, ICICI Bank, but uh, there I'm a little more concerned because it it is broken through the 200-week and 50-month. So there I think the pullback will be a little weaker. Axis may see a little sharper move because it is bounced from a pro proper uh, support or proper average. Right. Uh, as far as, you know, names like LNT uh, is concerned, uh, how do you see the, you know, bounce over there? BHEL bounced 5-6% yesterday. No, I think LNT am still a little uh, I mean, skeptical. Again, like ICICI, the way it's, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's broken so uh, clearly below the 200-week and the 50-month average 
that it tells me that the in at least in the shorter term the bounces won't sustain will i i think it needs to put in some hard work at these lower end add spend some time here build a base i don't think that will be a v shaped recovery for now right uh, as far as pharma names are concerned especially the mid cap pharma uh, you think the bounce today over there would last because we've seen such falls in the mid cap pharma space but they always tend to attract good buying even if the market were to go down see that's a different beast because uh, when you compare names like uh, icici or access or lnt or whatever they have been falling for 7 8 9 months at a stretch uh, pharma has been the darling of the market for the last 5 6 years so there is some unbelievable long positions still exist so i mean yes it is nice to see a bounce uh, am i convinced that it will survive i probably think not because i think still some froth is left out there uh which could which could see another bout of selling come in at some point right uh, you know uh, just uh, a word on the broader market uh, the selling pressure over there uh, we we have discussed this that you know how nifty has uh, limited downside uh, but the bounce today in the broader market is also looking good uh, uh, how, how would you look at the broader market charts and say uh, they are still in a trend on the upside I think the small cap is a little more worrying uh, because the way it has it has collapsed is is a lot more than the uh, mid cap. So I think I'm a little more concerned on the NSE small cap 100. Uh, there there are problems, but I think as far as the uh, mid cap index, I still think it's in a much much larger bull setup. Uh, yes, okay, maybe it has not finished some downward targets. but i still feel there you you are better off i think the small cap uh, will 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 need some more if you want to use the word soul searching or more again like like i said for some of the other stocks needs to spend some time out here uh, mid cap i don't mind seeing no i wouldn't say v shape recovery but a faster sharper recovery i think the mid cap index is still 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 stronger but the small cap is is a little more worrying the small cap probably resembles a bit more of the nifty whereas the mid cap index still shows a lot more strength than the nifty so there's there's a divide between the two i think if i was buying for trading i'd buy more mid cap than small cap right now right uh, what will be your view on idea a very very strong bounce back today and of course they have been very big underperformers uh, any signs that you're seeing that uh, they are making some long term uh, long term sort of uh, uh, you know bottoming uh, bottoming charts to be honest no because i think this is like a two two year lows eh, as far as idea is concerned so i think the damage is significant and and at already a lower base uh, before today's rally for just this 18 days the stock is down from 144 to 109 so that's a 30% almost fall in 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 less than uh, what 18 days mean trading number of sessions even less than that so i think uh, definitely a, a major problem for this stock uh this seems to be a, a significant breakdown in overall trend so i think this stock uh is going to take some time and it's going to probably make some seek some new lows before you see stability but if i just had to put out a, a support level as such i would say somewhere around the immediate support is about 99 or 100 for idea right uh, you know as far as reliance is concerned results would be coming out today uh it fell down 5% yesterday today it's almost up 2% from that 5% uh you think still very very strong and yesterday's correction was a correction in a bull market for yeah, lands I, i'd have to believe although i i i i mean i'm a firm believer there two breakouts i i earlier spoken about 1032 on a monthly closing basis so that's definitely one level to watch out for but there's another trend line i actually found on the chart which is more closer to 1100 so there are two major levels to watch out again on a monthly closing basis one is uh, uh, 1032 one is 1100 but having said that i think it's putting in the yards for the next bull market uh, the all the price action is 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 encouraging because one thing's for sure in the last two years whenever the market fell reliance fell this was the first instance in two years that i can remember that the market fell and reliance actually sustained or moved up only the giving giving up yesterday of i mean i right at the fag end of the selling so having done all that i'd like to believe that 
going forward, maybe not a very short-term view, but a more one to two-year horizon, uh, this is definitely setting up for a, a different move. Because remember, Reliance has done nothing in eight years. I mean, eight years ago, the stock was at 1,600. Uh, today is still around 1,000 when the market has moved from the previous high of 21,000 and the Sensex to about 30,000. So it's really not done much in the last uh, 14, 15 rally. I think it's setting up for, let's say, 16, second part of 16, 17, 18. You know, and that, that kind of move, I think, will, you will see in Reliance going forward.